Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. This is another quick video in which I'd like to share a very good tip, um, habit that you probably should be getting into if you are on an inhaler treatment for asthma, COPD or some other respiratory condition. And that comes from one of the comments that I've seen here and it's something that we as doctors always encourage. So this is the comment. Every time I come from for a doctor's checkup, my pulmonologist asks me to do a demo on how I use the inhaler to assure that I'm using it correctly. So this is just the takeaway message. I'll start with that because to be honest, using inhalers of various kinds can be difficult for most of us. And to be honest, even for me, when I was learning how to use these to show to other people, to patients, it was a bit tricky because all of them have different little quirks that you need to learn. So especially if you've been prescribed on an inhaler that's relatively new or you haven't used it before, I think it's always a good idea to bring it with you to your consultation just to see whether your doctor feels that you're using it correctly. And you can take an extra puff during the consultation to show your doctor that you are indeed using the right technique. They can correct your technique. They can give you some feedback on how to use it optimally or better in your case. Or if you are really, really struggling with it, at least the doctor can work with you to find another alternative inhaler that you can use. Because there are so many out there on the market. Like, look, I, I've just got a handful here just to show you. So imagine there's probably a device somewhere in this world that would be useful for you, that will have the right combination of medication for you. And as a bonus tip in this video, I'll just like to go over how to use the different kinds of inhalers that you might come across more commonly. And overall, there are two main types of inhalers. There are the ones that release a puff. So these are the MDI ones, the metered dose inhaler the inhalers, so things like Ventolin or the blue inhaler that release a puff in the air that you need to catch. So you need to synchronize your breathing as you're breathing in. You need to really trigger the inhaler and slowly breathe in. Sometimes these can be used with a spacer device and I'll actually show you what this means. I have one nearby. Bear with me. The, bear with me. There it is. So for example, this is a volumetic spacer. There are some other kinds as well. And these ones can help you if you are struggling to synchronize breathing in with triggering the inhaler. So you would then connect this here, trigger the inhaler in the big spacer device and then slowly breathe in the, the vapors that are the, the plume of particles inside this thing. But that's something that I would work with your doctor on technique and really inhaler technique is the main main thing that will uh, make or break whether you are getting benefits from inhalers because you're, if you're not getting the medication deep into the lungs where it needs to act probably won't get many benefits and you might even get more side effects as the uh, the medication deposits itself in the throat where it shouldn't be so always also remember to take some water rinse 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 gargle and spit that water out after you've used the inhalers just to, to make sure that there aren't any particles there but just to, to to show you how to use some of these things so like i said there are these MDI inhalers, the ones that release a puff. And then there is a whole lot of inhalers that contain a little bit of a powder inside. So these are the DPIs or dry powder inhalers. Now these ones have a slightly different technique compared to these ones. Some people find one or the other better for them. The reason is that for these ones, you need to really synchronize your breathing. For these ones, you need to breathe in hard. So it depends on the person, pros and cons for each person. So let me just show you basically the technique for these two broad categories by demonstrating with a Ventolin inhaler. And then I'll show you how to use the powdered inhalers by demonstrating some of the more common devices that you might encounter. So first of all, let me show you how to use the Ventolin inhaler. Now these ones you might need if you're having an asthma attack or if you're having uh, some kind of a, an acute uh, episode of symptoms. So you're wheezy, your chest is tight, you might, uh, your doctor may have recommended one of these to use. And these ones you tend to just shake, they may come in different shapes and sizes, but generally it's a blue inhaler and it always releases a little puff. So with this one, you have to empty your lungs first. And then as you're starting to breathe in, you trigger the inhaler and continue to slowly deeply breathe in to the top, hold your breath for up to 10 seconds and then slowly release. So let me try and demonstrate that. So I may make an error at first because, like I said, I haven't done this in a while. I don't have a respiratory condition, but that's what I mean. Practice makes perfect to always talk to your doctor. So let me just breathe out. Hold, 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 hold. And slowly release. So I think that was 
fairly good technique. I'll do it again with a different type that is a demonstrator because this actually has medication inside. So I'll probably not take a lot of puffs now because I don't need it. But this is just for you for the videos. So this is a foster inhaler. This is a different type of device. This is a demonstrator. This doesn't have medication inside, so that's why I can take another puff from this. Normally, this one you don't shake. So what I've made now is a mistake because I've been uh, taking this before. This one you don't have to shake. But basically, this one again releases a plume of medication. So I will try to inhale this as well and show you how it works. This one has a bit of a slower release of the, uh, the plume of particles. So I need to breathe in even slower than with the Ventolin. So let me show you how I do that. So again, I empty my lungs first so that I have a lot of range in order to breathe the medication in deeply. So let me do that. And just in the, for the purposes of actually using real medication, try to hold your breath a little bit longer than I did. So maybe up to 10 seconds and then slowly release. And then if you need to take another puff, because maybe you've, this is commonly prescribed as two puffs twice a day, you may have to take another medication in the same way, another dose of medication in the same way. So this, this is how you use the MDIs, the meter dose inhalers. So these ones that release a puff, so things that look like this. Now let's move on to some of the dry powder inhalers. Now, I'll probably show you first the Ellipta device, which is fairly common nowadays because uh, we've got all kinds of Relvar, Incruise, we've got uh, Trelegy, Ellipta. So this is a device that is a dry powdered inhaler. Several inhalers use this device, the Ellipta device. I'll probably show you the Symbicort as well because this one's very, very common uh, as well. And then this is a slightly older one, which is the Discus device, which is used for serotide. So, you, this one I think is kind of falling out of fashion a little bit, but I think it, it, it just shows that the uh, technique can be similar, but there are just like little quirks for the inhaler. So I think this is enough to just give you an idea. Now with the DPI inhalers, you tend to breathe in deep and strong. So you need not to breathe in slowly as I did with these ones. So you don't, you have to be a bit more strong with these ones. You have to sort of empty your lungs and then try to breathe in quickly to get all that powder moving from inside the device. So this is where the difference lies. But these ones, you tend to need to arm first. So before, it's kind of a two-step process. So like these ones, you just um, trigger them, releases the medication. These ones don't release anything. So you have to arm them, set up the dose, and then breathe in, right? So let's try the Ellipta first. Now this one is fairly simple because it doesn't have a lot of steps to it. So if you have one of these devices, this is how you use it. Basically, you then open this little cap, it has this little thing here at the top. So if you pull this down, it releases this uh, vent. So you don't cover this vent with your finger while you're breathing in. It has a mouthpiece through, through which you would inhale the powder. So then as you pull this down, it clicks, right? So it made a click. So now this is ready to be used. So then you may have noticed that the indicator has gone down from 17 to 16. So let this is ready to be used. So I breathe out with all the inhalers, try to breathe out first, empty your lungs so that you have all that range and then you have to breathe in strongly. So I'll do that now. So I'll hold it like this, just leaving this little air vent open. So breathing out. Hold, 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 up to 10 seconds, slowly release. And then if you need to take a medication again, you would basically just close this, and then you would open it again and do the same procedure. But this is normally how you would use it. Probably it's just a one-off dose that you need to take on these ones. All right, so let's move on. Symbicort. So Symbicort, the turbohaler device, you may find different inhalers. Not most commonly it's uh, Symbicort, but there could be others that may be in the same turbohaler device. So you may recognize this by the uh, big white cap that you twist off, right? And it shows you this inhaler that has a little mouthpiece here at the top. And then it has an indicator uh, of doses, which is on the side here. So I'm not sure if you can see that because the camera may not uh, show that much detail. But basically with, the, with this indicator, I, I do get a lot of comments saying that the indicator doesn't go down. So it goes down in numbers of 20, in uh, multiples of 20. So it's slow to, to get, to, it's just more of an indication that there's still some doses left. So don't worry too much about it. But this one, if you need to use it, you again need to arm it first. So it's again a dry powder inhaler. So you would have to hold the, the white part and twist the bottom once in one direction and then back and it clicks. 
right? So once you've heard that, uh, you've heard that reassuring click, it's ready to be used. So you use the same technique. You empty your lungs first and breathe in powerfully, deeply, as much as you can, hold your breath at the top. So let me do that for you. Hold, 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 slowly release, right? So try to hold for as long as you can, maybe 10 seconds and then slowly release. And if you need to take another medication, you'd have to do this again. So again, you twist the bottom again and back. And then this uh, clicks and it's ready to be used. You've heard that click, so I can do another dose now. Hold, 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 slowly release, right? So this is how you use the turbohaler devices, most commonly Symbicord. Now, Ceratide is an interesting inhaler. It's been around for a long time. A lot of patients really love it, uh, but it's it's kind of falling a little bit out of fashion because it's an older form of an inhaler. It's one of the first ones that has come uh, to market that it was, has looked more complex. So with this one, basically you have this disc. So when you want to use it, you need to arm it every time. So basically, again, it's a dry powder inhaler, but when you hold the disc, you can see that it kind of moves. So, so what you do is basically you hold this, you turn this over and this clicks and it sort of exposes this mouthpiece through which you would inhale. Now this one has a two-step process. So once you've done this, it's not ready to be used yet. So if when you're ready to use it, you also have this little lever here on the side. Let me show you. So hopefully you can see that there's a little lever here. So this one, we need to pull down to activate the inhaler. So you do this and it clicks again. Now the inhaler is ready to be used and you would inhale through this mouthpiece at the top. So let me show you how you do that. So again, same principle, you empty your lungs fully and then breathe in powerfully, deeply, hold your breath at the top. So let me do that again. So quick inhale, right? Like with all the other dry powdered inhalers. So emptying my lungs. Hold, hold and slowly release. Right, and when you're done, you can just twist it off to close it. So again, it has these li little reassuring clicks. Bam. And I don't know if you've seen, but that lever has actually gone back to the, its initial, initial position. So this is how you use the dry powder inhalers versus the MDI inhalers. So hopefully this was useful to you. And like I said, that comment that I've seen on the channel is great. So every time you go for a doctor checkup for your lungs, and if you are on inhaler treatment, try to take the inhalers with you and try to ask your doctor if they can uh, witness you taking one dose it's not going to harm you in most cases you don't you cannot take that much from an inhaler but just to see whether your technique is good because if you have good technique that's the first step to getting the maximum benefit from these type of medications which are actually very safe and very effective hopefully you found this helpful and if you have further questions leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you in future videos all the best and good health